What's going on everybody and welcome back to Comic Breakdown. If you guys are new to the channel, do me a favor and hit that sub button. Hit that notification bell, make sure you're not missing any of the awesome content that we have coming out. And with this video, we are jumping into She-Hulk issue number 3. If you have not been keeping up with this series, be sure to check out the link in my description as well as the top of this video. It will get you completely caught up on everything going on with this series by Rainbow Rowl. Over the course of the last two issues, what we have seen is the arrival of Jack of Hearts, making his way to She-Hulk's apartment, or at least the apartment that she is currently staying in because she doesn't have anywhere else to go. He was able to track her using her radiation signature. The only issue is, he has no idea where he has been, how he got here, or what is going on with his body, not wanting to alert Tony Stark or anybody else. Fearing that they might put him in some kind of containment or test lab or test facility. He wants to keep this between the two of them. And so while they try to piece together all of his memories, there is something hiding just underneath the surface. Be sure to buy the comic, support the industry, and with that being said, let's dive into this breakdown. Alright gang, so as we dive into She-Hulk issue number 3, we are taken to the law office of Mallory Book. And over the course of the last couple of days, ever since she actually started working here, she hasn't been bringing in any kind of paying clients. And so because of this, Mallory has been on her case saying that by the end of the day, you need to bring me some paying clients. Telling Andy to get her into the system, She-Hulk looks over her shoulder, only to find awesome Andy, former minion of the Mad Thinker kick-butt office assistant, going in and giving him a big ol' hug. For a while there, he had been struggling with memory issues, but Mallory was able to restore him from a backup. More importantly, right now she needs to get to work and start focusing on bringing in clients. Sitting down two hours and two dozen humiliating phone calls later, the truth is, she has been out of the game for quite some time. She hasn't been in a law room in a long time. And so what client base she used to have, she no longer does. While sitting here eating away at some donuts, this is when Ben calls, aka The Thing. He's calling because he needs a lawyer. Being summoned to court, she lets him know that you're not above the law, you're gonna have to go to the summons and just pay your ticket. But the truth is, Mallory is not letting She-Hulk work with any kind of super-powered individuals. She wants to keep it very just normal individuals, normal people, no extra human types. And while this may be discrimination, Mallory Book doesn't care. With Ben not giving up for a second, She-Hulk lets it be known, okay, if you meet me outside tomorrow, maybe we can discuss and I can give you a little bit of advice. With Quicksilver also giving her a phone call, what we are learning is that superhuman individuals are the ones that are really reaching out to her, trying to get assistance. And while Mallory Book may not like this, Jennifer may have found herself a new avenue to start her own law firm. After a very long day of work, She-Hulk arrives back at the apartment with a hot and piping pizza. Jack of Hearts, never sleeping before in his life, he has been passed out the entire day. Waking up to the smell of pizza, the two of them, they sit down, and She-Hulk asks the question, have you figured anything out? else. Have you found any new memories that might help figure out what is going on? But still, the only memory he has is waking up in that vat. Waking up, breaking out, and knowing that he needed to find She-Hulk. And She-Hulk finds this very interesting because they're, they're individuals that have never really been super close to one another. There was no like hardline connection where trauma sets in and you immediately go find that person. The only conclusion that he can come up with with 
is that she was the last person he was around. That maybe he came here to apologize to She-Hulk for everything that he had put her through. Now, of course, Jennifer, she doesn't care about any of that. The truth is, the past is the past. I'm fine, you're fine. Let's eat some pizza and try to figure out what actually is going on without having to worry about all of this guilt. Busting out her legal pad, she begins to write down everything that they currently know. They know that he exploded in space. But exploding in space doesn't necessarily mean that he died. And this is when She-Hulk asked the question, what is your deal? Like, how did you get your superpowers? Were you bit by a radioactive spider? Did you have a radioactive blood transfusion? Like, how did you become Jack of Hearts? Letting it be known that his mother, she was an alien. His father was developing a new form of energy known as Zero Fluid. It. He fell into a vat, and it was on that day he was murdered. He built the suit that he is wearing to contain the radiation. He trained with S.H.I.E.L.D., spent many years in space looking for some kind of answers. She-Hulk letting him know that it sounds like you are just reciting something that you have written down. The truth is, Jack of Hearts doesn't really know anything about himself. Everything he knows, he was told by other people. From Tony Stark, to S.H.I.E.L.D., to his mother's own government. All he truly has is a list of strange stories given to him by people that want to use his power in some way, shape, or form. And this is where she tells him, Everything you know, everything you have been told, let's throw it all out the window and try to start from the very beginning. Let's find out the truth for ourselves. As they begin munching down on some pizza, She-Hulk has to ask the question, did you really wake up with a red heart on your eye? He says no, that he did it just for the aesthetic. And so after eating all of this pizza, having a couple of drinks, they really don't have too much information. But what they do want to test is his abilities, see if his powers are still really up to par. As he uses his radiation to try and incinerate this pizza box, what we learn is Jack of Hearts, he has been drained of his radiation, or at least he, he's lacking his abilities. Floating up into the air, he's able to do so, but he knows this something is off. This something is very wrong with him. As they try to figure out what is going on, thinking maybe his system is just rebooting. After his explosion, maybe he needs to take in more radiation, and it's just taking a long time for him to truly charge up. But the truth is, he needs a doctor. He needs someone to examine him and try to figure out what has happened. Jack of Hearts still refusing to see anybody, saying that he is too worried that people are are gonna walk him up telling him that maybe we should take your suit off, maybe get a shower, try to relax a little bit. Now for Jack of Hearts, this is also something new. He has never needed to take a shower. He has never needed to go to the bathroom. He has worn this suit for as long as he can remember. The truth is though, his entire life has changed and maybe it's time for him to have a change as well. Going into her closet, she goes and looks for some kind of t-shirt and clothes for him to wear. While she's in in there, she makes a phone call to Patsy Walker. And as they have a quick little gossip just talking about things going on in their lives, she has to ask about Jack of Hearts and what Patsy might know about him. The truth is, there's not a lot anybody actually knows. He's a guy that came from space every now and again, and he helped us out. Seemingly more powerful than the majority of us put together. Or at the very least, he outpowered a good amount of members that were on the Avengers, so on and so forth. Forth. But then he would disappear. He would be gone for quite some time and then show up randomly yet again. Patsy saying that she'll do a little bit more digging, see what they can find inside the Avengers files. That maybe, just maybe, there is something that can help them out here. With Jack coming out dressed in some regular clothes, the t-shirt she picked out just so happens to have a big ol' heart on it. And that will be the end of this issue. 
So let me know what you guys think down in the comments. All right, so I'm gonna be a little bit harsh here. This is the first line that I have ever read by Rainbow. I think that's an absolutely crazy name. I, I, I'm curious if her parents actually named her Rainbow or she chose that name on her own. But regardless, this story is taking so freaking long. I know we're only three issues in, but in three issues, we really haven't left Jennifer's apartment. It has been three issues of sitting on the couch and eating food. We've barely been given any kind of detail of what is happening. We are not getting any real information. The last three issues have reiterated over and over and over again everything that the first issue told us. And so for me, that is extremely frustrating because this has so much promise. The artwork is absolutely amazing. Why Rainbow is taking so long to, to finally tell us anything is beyond me. You know, we're not even getting small glimpses or tiny hints on what is actually happening. Not the slightest inclination on who had Jack trapped inside of that vat. Was he allowed to escape? Who is the person that is hunting She-Hulk? And it took us three issues for Jack of Heart to use his power to find out that he doesn't have his ability. Like I said, it's just disappointing. Three issues and we really haven't gotten anywhere. We are still in the same apartment, sitting on the same couch, just eating junk food. You know, that's my life. <laughs> like, that's what I do. Granted, I, I've changed my diet up. I'm eating a lot better now, but that's regular day life. And so when we read comic books, at least for me, I want to be taken out of reality. I don't mean I don't mind being dropped in every now and again, but when you do it for three issues, sitting on a couch, doing nothing, getting absolutely nowhere, even with all of this dialogue, it's a little bit disappointing. But with that being said, I am more than willing to give this a chance. I do enjoy She-Hulk, I do absolutely love the artwork, I love the idea of Jack of Hearts being implemented in so many different lines. Now, I am curious where this takes place. I got to assume that this takes place before the Reckoning War, because we have She-Hulk and Jack of Hearts out there fighting with the Fantastic Four. So with issue number four, I really do hope that everything is going to get pushed forward, that our story, our narrative is going to move in the right direction. Direction, and we're gonna find out much more about what the heck is happening. So let me know your thoughts. Let me know your theories. If you would like to support the channel, you can always do so by hitting the super thanks button. This button will let you donate directly to the channel and every little bit helps us out. Now, if you can't do that, do me a favor, subscribe to the channel, hit that notification bell, make sure you like this video, and until the next breakdown.